Hello everyone, we're back again with the second part of Zombies Hate My Neighbors. This is a bonus level, and I uh, forgot to mention this for SNES, which you probably saw on the title screen of my other video. Description and all that. This one um, is more like having fun just collecting items, health kits, fire extinguishers right there, you know. Save the cheat leader. Get the gold, random, tossed around gold. And there's Dracula. There's a werewolf stuck in the bushes. Oh, he jumped up. Oh. And Dracula doesn't really die. He just kind of like um, flies away. I like the way those little creepy dolls jump out of like on those specific areas, you know, like the crib right there, the boxes that, uh, that they're from, toy boxes, really creative on the game designer's part. Got that one. Just gonna look around a little more. We got the soda. Froze Dracula. You know, I was thinking they should probably make like a film of Zombies Ate My Neighbors. As long as they follow the premise of the game and just uh, really work hard on a script and plot, they can do a real good job on it. Got through that bonus. A lot of chill eaters. Password won't be needing that though. Terrifying to the bone. Chopping mall. Ooh, got that song. Thank <laughs> you. 
save that guy. Little spikes that kind of remind me of uh, um, the NES game um, Gremlins, the new batch part two. Because they're just kind of small, they just kind of pop out of nowhere, pop out of the floor, methodically trying to attack you. Whoa, that zombie almost got him. They did a great job in designing the level, too. Aw, oh, I lost a victim. That's a very tentacly looking blob, too. I'm out. Dinner on Monster Island. This is one of my other levels I like. <clears throat> one other level that I particularly like is um the level um or see how it like, looks like a, you're like an island, you know, with all that water around you. I kind of like these types of levels where there's lots of water around. It kind of has those uh, Green Lagoon monsters, you know, from the old, old time black and white films. There's another one later on in the game that I like the most. Just for the key. And I've also noticed too, um, and one of the other levels, uh, the very first couple of levels in the first video that I uploaded, you can tell that as you progress in the game, it gets darker. You, you can tell because the grass gets darker, you know. And uh, I think in this level, um, I think I barely noticed it, but uh, it actually has gotten darker, you know. 
It was probably like around noon or something like that. Or uh, close to 6 p.m. And it was getting dark, so that's a real cool effect that they added to the game. Or should I say it was evening? Yeah, that's the right word. This ant level is real cool too. And I have to also say too that I saw the um, the playthrough on YouTube of Zombies Ate My Friends and I have to say that it's kind of like a 2D R RPG kind of game and like the way they animate them is kind of like half ass you know like uh, like just kind of very modern kind of half ass animation you can tell um, it's not really it doesn't look like a real good game the original is always better I must always say because I know that they knocked off the title from this one and tried to make a new game but it's just it they didn't do a good job on it Got them, and I'm out of there. Doing very well so far, very good. No bazooka fire bonus. Office of the Doom. Now I, I like the way they did, did they did this level. It kind of reminds me of like a dark gloomy kind of Dracula-esque castle even though there is a castle with Dracula in it in the game but this one just kind of just like the detail and the texture of the level just kind of reminds me of like a, a big house mansion kind of thing even though it's an office but I like the way they just did everything the skeletons up there right there see them they're like receptionists they're dead sitting there I, they did an awesome job the webbing this song is really cool too. Toy dolls, it just all works together, everything, all the elements work together in this level. Shroom guys. If only in real life, squirt guns would would actually kill zombies. Like if we were had to have uh, an apocalyptic 
moment in our earth where there was zombies running the earth, running all over the earth. All we had to do was use water from squirt guns or from hoses or from whatever just to kill them. You know, with the one hit or quitter kind of thing that we see. That would be so awesome. Got a bonus level. Someplace very warm. Hmm. Yeah. The chillers just there. Everyone's just there. This is a bonus level, so that's why they're all. Nice effect on the lava. I like that. Nice and bubbly looking. This has a lot of little treats and bonus and points to collect here. Get that one up. <laughs> Squidman of the Deep, huh? You know, this is the one level I was talking about. There's another one further down, but this one's a real cool one. Nice palm trees, nice environment. This is when we get introduced to these green lagoon monster guys. First appearance is in this level. I like the way they die with the fishes. That's just so cool. They explode into a pile of fish. Almost got those. There, see right there, see? Fish. And this little part right here too, kind of reminds me of uh, Jason Voorhees, the movies. While you're in the boat, jumps out at you from the water. Kind of reminds me of Yokozuna from uh, WrestleMania, the arcade game, where when you hit Yokozuna um, uh, with certain combos or whatever, like he um, instead of blood coming out of him, like you know, the fish pops out of him, you know. And like the other characters, like Razor Ramon, when you punch him, the razors pop out of him, you know. So it's very um, clever and very cool. Nightmare and Terror Street, kind of like Nightmare and Elm Street. Great design, the level. You know, this one is like, to me, the pinnacle level because it has a an obvious street, has a road, has a homes. You're in a neighborhood, and neighborhood is in a graveyard. So that's just effing awesome. You know, great design on the team. I think that this level gets dark too. There we go. It's time to transition right now. 
Yeah, you see it? Look at the outside light poles. There, see, they're glowing more. Indication that it's darker outside. It's awesome. Awesome element to the game. So you're in someone's house. Is that because I'm moving? You're trying to shut the door. You're trying to lock all the windows, and you're trying to be safe in the house. It's kind of like a, a safe room in um, Left 4 Dead, you know? Just very. It's just very, very awesome. Those some fast zombies. This level to me is probably the pinnacle example of um, what Zombies and My Neighbors is. If there was a level to represent Zombies and My Neighbors the game, this level would probably be a winner. Now this level is also to the first appearance of those, I guess, snakeoids or whatever they're called. Those big old huge monstrous ectoskeleton, exoskeleton, whatever it's called. Um, ectoskeleton uh, monsters, as you see right here, they're very uh, graphically well designed, very challenging. Um, brings a lot of immense um, excitement in the gameplay itself, very engaging. See that one's gonna come out. <laughs> I guess you can see this one's kind of like a boss-ish kind of level. The multiple um, snakeoids, kind of big old worm things. And for like Super Nintendo, um, this was also another feat that was quite starting to become more often than not regular. To have large kind of a um, monster type of boss-ish kind of um, um, characters in the game. You know, they're starting to introduce large um, um, enemies in video games in general. And so this was, this game was kind of like in around the era where they're becoming, it was becoming common. Slightly more common than before than for SNES and things like that. Because you have to understand that Super Nintendo had a better um, graphics um, um, engine than Sega. Sega's games were always very small, but they're very detailed and small. Super Nintendo was very large. And it felt like a, almost as closest thing to arcade game. But even though they're large, they're very fairly, very well detailed. Like for instance, the um, Mortal Kombat for Sega Genesis, the, the, the players, the characters are very small, but they're very detailed. But for Super Nintendo, they're very large, almost close to the arcade size of the era. So Super Nintendo really did um, um, try to distinguish themselves graphically by utilizing larger elements in the games that they created. 
it was more impressive, I would say. But Sega Genesis did have a lot of gems with their graphics engine that they had. Sonic the Hedgehog games were also very badass too. Gunstar Heroes was one game that was just a random ass game that came out of nowhere, but it was a fun game to play for Sega Genesis. That game had some great music, great action, great environments, very fast and fast paced game, awesome bosses, it was very different and unique for the time, and it was very fun and easy to play. Um, Gunstar Heroes had an epicness to it that was very unique for the game itself, you know? Another game that came out similar to the same time for Sega Genesis was Rocket Knight, Ad Rocket Knight Adventures. That was also a game that had some great graphics, awesome design, great cartoony characters, great uh, environments, great music, awesome music, unforgettable music, um, great pacing. Um, the music intertwined with the levels so flawlessly you felt engaged. The designs of the characters, you fell in love with the, the designs of the enemies and the characters. Great plot, everything, you fight these evil pigs. It was great, it was an awesome game. Oh, there is a UFO there, you're back again, huh? One of the Martians' buddies back for revenge. Avenge his death. Randomly pops out of nowhere. And it seems to me that only Coke can kill him. And he's dead. It's a good thing there's no time limit. You notice when that <laughs> that dog was in that red bubble, it looked like a, a silhouette of a human? You know, that's one of the hum humorous things about this game. Little inconsistencies, you know? He's all frightened. Damn, those Mars Martians are really fast. Love that light pole. Love it. Love the lighting in the game. Got her. Treasure chest right there, big old treasure chest. And you would think that these victims would be like running away, hiding. I mean, uh, what are they doing there? <laughs> you know, they're just kind of standing there. They're not even aware of the fact that they're in danger until. Danger comes around blatantly in front of their face to get scared. It's just the humor of the game, though.
I like the way those werewolves die. The mouths open up and the spirit, green spirit, comes out. That Frankenstein is getting socked the hell up right there, man. Throw some powerful fists. Dracula's um, getting weakened when he starts to, you know, fly around quick around you like that. That's how you know that uh, the next punch is gonna make him fly away. A few more, and there he is. Tom's just standing there waiting for you to come up to him just so he can disappear with that potion of this. Follow the leader. That's all that guy's doing. Alright, everybody, this is Richard Cespedes. I'd like to thank y'all for watching the second part of Zombies Ate My Neighbors for SNES. Check out and wait for number three and four to come out. Thank you and God bless.